G'day folks, welcome back to another vid. We are out and about exploring and we've come across a river crossing and we thought we'd uh, pull up and have a bit of a chat about the best way to tackle something like this in case you come across it on your adventures. So look, with water crossings, a lot of it's about assessment and making sure that it's safe to cross the particular water crossing you're about to do. Now that might be to get to a fantastic campsite, it might be that that's the way you've got to go on your travels. Now what are we thinking about? You know, we're thinking about the depth, the flow, and the surface that you're driving across. So let's, let's break that down. So when we talk about depth, we need to be aware that each vehicle has a particular weighting depth, a recommended weighting depth that's recommended by the manufacturer. In our case, the weighting depth is 300 mil. So that's not too deep. Considering we have a two inch lift, uh, we probably get a little bit more than 300 mil. But if we stick to the recommended uh, depth of 300 mil, then you start to uh, get an understanding of just how deep you can cross in one of these vehicles. Now we have taken it a bit deeper uh, on some of our trips, but again, you know, we've been we're very careful how we tackle it and we go very, very slow and we know exactly what we're doing. So, um, you know, it's very, very important that you uh, take a lot of things into consideration. So anyway, the depth. Now with the depth, uh, it's a good time to talk about where the air intake is on our van. Now in our case, the air intake is right here, right down low as a matter of fact, uh, on the driver's side, near the driving light, just where the four motion badge is. So that's a great spot to let air come into the vehicle, to the engine, so it can breathe, but it's not a real good spot to, to suck in water. So um, if you know that, that's, that's very, very important, right? Um, now it only takes a teaspoon of water to get inside your engine to cause your drama, so uh, keep that in mind. So we've actually got a, a Bravo snorkel put on our vehicle, and what that snorkel does, it, as you can see, it lifts up the air intake point of the vehicle. That doesn't mean you can drive it like a submarine and, and you know, take the, a river crossing up to here because the vehicle's going to float anyway. Uh, but certainly it does help, it not only helps with water uh, getting into the engine, but it also helps keep the vehicle uh, nice and clean in terms of sucking in nice fresh air instead of dust that can accumulate down here as you're driving around. Um, okay, so that's, that's the depth. Now, with the other thing we've got just to deal with that, by the way, is when we pull up to a crossing, what we like to do is pull up and uh, just wait out and let the diffs uh, cool down because that hot oil in there and the gases, if you submerge those diffs in cold water, as often there is when you're doing a crossing, then it's likely the water can come in through uh, there's a little breather valve on the diffs uh, and the gearbox and what can happen is water can get sucked into those and then cause your problem as the water contaminates with the oil. So to combat that, we've got diff breathers put in, they're cycle diff breathers and what that does is just lifts that air intake point right up out of harm's way. But if you haven't got those, don't stress, just pull up, you know, 10-15 minutes, let things cool down and then you're pretty much right to go through. Alright, so look, depth. Now, flow. There's an old saying that if you can't walk it, there's no chance you're going to be able to drive it. Okay, so uh, and if you can, if you think about how much uh, real estate we've got on the side of our van, there's a lot of water that can actually push up and potentially cause your vehicle to float off the track, which is a real problem if it's if there's a real deep causeway or you've got water on either side of that causeway, particularly up north where there's uh, you know uh, crocs floating around. So the flow needs to be, uh, you'll be able to walk it I should say, uh, and it needs to be at a nice slow pace uh, so that you're not risking the vehicle uh, floating away. Now the surface is another consideration. Uh, so like, like all off-roading, if it's sand, you need to consider uh, your traction control, switching your traction control off or mud. Uh, if it's rocky surface, then we don't need to worry about switching off the traction aids or traction control. Uh, but it might mean we need to be a bit more mindful about what rocks are, are submerged under that water. Um, so, you know, there might be a big rock there, you need to be aware of it. So when you do your assessment, and that might be by walking through and identifying where those high points are to make sure you, you, know, you, you drive your vehicle over the smoothest path and making sure you're not going to get hung up or anything or, you know, damage any part of your, uh, your suspension components under the vehicle or worse. So. Um, once we've done our assessment, we can pretty much safely uh, drive across. Now, how fast are we gonna go? We're gonna go probably walking pace. And I always like to put the vehicle in the lowest gear I've got. 
So in our case, it's the, the uh, I think it's M1 in the T6.1s, and in our case, it's just the low first gear uh, using the, the manual uh, override there. So uh, nice and slow, walking pace, and I'm also going to create a bow wave by doing that. And the bow wave basically creates a bit of a, a gap between the engine and uh, and the water, so it just pushes it forward. Uh, so that's a good little technique. Uh, so that's very, very important. There's lots of other things you need to consider. Um, you know, if you're going too fast in, in the water crossing, they look great for shots, you know, with the big water flying everywhere. The problem is you can get water underneath. And if the water gets underneath, in the, in the fan blades in particular, they can tend to splay forward and you can cut out your radiator. So it's not a really good idea to go too fast. Uh, the other thing is, when you get to the end of the crossing, it's a great idea just to pause, let all the water come out of the, uh, or the chassis or what have you, and that way it actually protects the environment, so it protects the track as on the other side of either side of the water crossing, uh, so that we don't, we don't deteriorate that track and it gets cut out and makes it harder for other vehicles to go through. So, um, you know, uh, the other, other safety things, I like to put my seatbelt on. Some people like to have it off. I like to have it on because you can get tossed around. Uh, and, uh, you know, on that note, in the unlikely event you get pushed off a causeway or creek crossing, um, always have an escape route. So having the windows down helps you get out in a hurry. Okay, so uh, consider that. But the seatbelt on, because if you do get tossed around, at least you've got half a chance to stay intact. Um, you know, there is situations where you can roll the vehicle and you, um, you know, you can get thrown out of the vehicle. So, uh, you know, uh, it's a good idea to keep that seatbelt on at all times. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, if I've forgotten anything, by all means, stick it down in the comments. You know, it's, it's uh, you, you try and remember everything, but you, you just can't. But uh, they're the main things. Uh, the main thing is to be safe. Of course, if it's flooded, never drive it. Uh, never take a chance with, with your life and, and your loved ones. And just get out there and explore, have a crack, have fun, for the love of travel. <laughs>